Hey everybody, the name of this tune is Whiskey Before Breakfast. This is a bluegrass version of a Canadian fiddle tune. This uh, fiddle tune started off uh, in the plains of Canada and it's probably best known uh, version is uh, Andy DeJarlis's. Uh, Andy DeJarlis was a Metis fiddle player and for more info on what that's all about you can download the lesson notes in, uh, by clicking on the link in the description. Um, this is an inter intermediate level lesson, uh, so if you're in the second book of the American Fiddle Method or the second book of Suzuki, this lesson should feel pretty comfortable to you. Um, there's some forefinger in this tune, not a lot. There's a fair number of string crossings uh, and some faster uh, eighth note phrases, extended eighth note phrases. Um, solidly intermediate I would say but if you're an advanced beginner go ahead and give it a try you might find because of the lesson is paced pretty slow um, pretty slowly uh, you might find that it's 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 doable so um, I'm gonna quit gabbing and get right to it if you have any questions you can contact me at uh, Eric on fiddle.com that's E-R-I-C on fiddle.com and again if you want lesson notes click on the link below take it easy Bye. So whiskey before breakfast. We're going to start with uh, basically a D major scale, walking up from an open D to an open A. So we're walking up the scale step by step, and we're going to start with a two note slur from open D to D1. finish up the uh, measure with a quick D2 to D3, both eighth notes. So all together that would be walking up, quick eighth notes. Let's practice that together. One more time. Again. Would stay generally in the middle of the bow for most of this tune. We have a lot of a lot of quick eighth note uh, runs in this tune, and it's generally a good idea to be in the middle of the bow um, because we'll have uh, when it comes time to play some longer notes, and there are a few. We're going to have room on either side of that middle zone to to bow, so we have lots of options. And this is generally just a good sort of light uh, part of the bow. It's easy to work with, especially when we're moving quickly. So that brings us to measure two. That brings us to measure two. We have, uh, we're gonna, another two note slur from open A to A1. And then we're gonna step back down. Then to an open D, D1. Let's just take that much. So we've got A to A1, open A, D3, D2, D, open D. got an over the bar line slur. It's going to connect that eighth note to the first quarter note of the next measure. And as we do that, we're going to be accenting that quarter note. It's almost as if we're kind of tipping over into the next measure. So let's put it all together, starting on a down bow with a two note slur, A to A1. Tipping over into the next measure. Let's practice that a few times. One more time. Let's 
Let's look at measure three, the last measure of this line. And let's grab that over the bar line slur as we go into that measure. So we're gonna go D2 to D3. Again, let's practice kind of tipping over into that first note of the next measure. We're gonna be adding a little bit of speed to our bow to kind of make that accent happen. Now, we're gonna leave our third finger down and grab that A1 and then come back to the, the D3. So, now during the second half of this measure, we're gonna put our second finger down and leave it down for the rest of the measure. Because we're gonna be back there in a second. Whenever you can find little efficiencies like this, you should, you should take advantage of them because um, I always tell students, never miss an opportunity to be lazy. Uh, and I'm, I'm only half joking here. You wanna use the minimum of effort to make things happen. Uh, and that's, that contributes to a much smoother sound overall. So, as opposed to this. You see how much extra work, and you hear that extra work in the line. So leave that third finger down for the first half of the measure, second finger down through the second half of the measure. Now let's practice it together, starting over the bar line. Again, tip, second finger down, one more time, and again, let's take a look at measure four. So here we're going to start on the down bow with a quarter note, D1, on an up bow, a two note slur. And now we're going to walk down the scale to the high three on the G, then back up to the first finger. So, so do take, take note of the fact that this is um, take two. Okay, let's look at measure four. We're going to start off with a D1, a quarter note, on a down bow, then to a two note slur on an up bow. Now we're gonna walk down the scale to a high three. And then we're gonna wind up with an up bow D1. So, two note slur, walk down to high three, then back to our starting note on an up bow. Let's run that together. High three, don't forget. Starting on a down bow. Ending on an up bow. Again. Okay, let's review the last four measures, measures one through four. So I'm gonna play it through just to remind you of how this all fits together. And now let's play it together, a bit slower than that. So, together. And just a word about bowing. You might have noticed that I'm staying within roughly the middle third of the bow. 
the, the, the inside third of the bow. Keeping the bow pretty short. Bowing a, t a tune like this, um, it's a reel or a breakdown, which means it's uh, generally a fast or mid-tempo to fast uh, tune in 2-4 four or 4-4. Four four. Uh, we're using a lot of eighth notes rhythmically. Um, we want to give them almost like a pick-like attack, the, the kind of attack that, a, that a, um, a mandolinist or a guitarist would use while flat picking um, the song. So we're gonna keep the bow fairly short, fairly choppy, just short of staccato. And we're gonna keep it in the middle of the bow because it's kind of a lighter, lighter part of the bow and it's, it's a flexible part of the bow. And by that I mean, um, if you do have a long note, you have room to move on either side of that middle zone. So really, this is sort of good general advice, not just for whiskey before breakfast, but for tunes that are faster in general. You want to keep those really sort of fast um, or faster uh, parts of the tune that are all eighth notes, just like a, like a steady stream of eighth notes. Keep it in the middle of the bow, and then every now and then you're going to come across maybe a longer note, a quarter note or even a half note. Um, and you want to have room to, to, to roam on either side of that. So let's do one more uh, review of, the, of, of measures one through four. And um, also keep in mind too, remember we had the, the sort of the, the tipping over the bar line after measure two. You want to give that, that note a little bit of a push, that, that D3 or G if you want to use the letter name. That's one thing to keep in mind. And, and again, remember we want to keep the third finger down at the beginning of the third measure. The second finger down during the second half of that measure. And then in the fourth measure, remember to do the high three. Okay, enough of my gabbing. Let's do review one more time of measures one through four. to measure five. So this one is going to seem uh, familiar at this point because we've played it before. The, uh, the beginning of the melody repeats again in the second half of the A part. So as you remember, this is that, that riff that's uh, basically a run up the scale from an open D to A and then that two note little uh, lick at the end. to the next measure since we've already looked at this little piece of melody before um, and we'll of course review this um, after a few measures here so next measure this would be measure six we're going to start with an open a to a1 and if that sounds familiar there's a reason for it you did this measure uh you played this measure in the second measure of of the first section that we looked at the first four measures if that makes sense so let's extend that this time let's do let's include that over the bar line slur that's going to take us into the last measure of the second line Tip. So we're going to tip into that next measure. Let's practice that together a couple times. And that takes us to the last measure of the second line. We're really cruising. Um, and you're going to see this, in, in, if you haven't already, in a lot of fiddle tunes, where, where there's going to be um, repetition. Uh, a melodic idea will repeat itself <clears throat> in the first and second half of the, of the A part or B part, for instance. You see this quite a lot. So let's look at that last measure. Tipping over, we're going to grab the note on the other side of the bar line. 
And then we're going to keep our third finger down, remember? Now we're going to keep our second finger down. Finally, that brings us to measure eight. <clears throat> Here we have another kind of scaly little run. We have a walk down from D1. That's a two note slur to the open D. Down to the high three on the G. Remember, we have that raised third finger in this key, and then back to our starting note. And we come to rest on an open D. So we'll be starting on a down bow and ending on an up bow. And that's good because then we can come back to the beginning. You see that to the right, <clears throat> to the right of that half note, we have a repeat. So that's going to send us back to the beginning and we're going to start again on a down bow and repeat everything exactly as we played it before. So let's play measure eight together. We have one, oh, three, one, oh. And don't forget to slur those first two notes. Let's practice that a couple times. One more time. Okay, let's do some review. We'll review measure five through eight. So we start off again with that familiar piece of melody that we saw at the beginning of the tune. And all of that's exactly the same as what came before it. And then we have our ending phrase. One, oh, high three, one, open D. So let's practice that a couple times together. Tip, third finger down, second finger down. One more time. Let's do it one more time together. Okay, now let's do some review. Uh, we're going to review the whole A section together. So, from the beginning, I'll play it so you can hear it. Just listen, don't worry about playing along, and then we're gonna play together. Let's do it together. One more time together. If you feel that you don't have this part of the tune down 100% or if it's not all feeling completely comfortable to you, that's, that's just fine. That's par for the course. Um, 
I would say you can either do more review at this point or feel free to actually move on to the B section. Sometimes it's good just to get a quick overview of the whole tune and then go back and look at the trouble spots. And that's one of the great things about video is that you can really just keep hitting rewind forever. It's, I always say, re rewinding is free. So uh, feel free to do, do either at this point. Go back to the beginning and review the A section or feel free to move on ahead to the B section, which is what we're gonna do right now. Let's look at the B section of the tune. We're gonna start off with some more, uh, what we would call legato or long phrasing here. We have two slurs. First one is gonna be an eighth note to a quarter note. So it's gonna have kind of a lopsided, sort of a jaunty feel to it. And then we have another one where we're going eighth note to half note. And then finishing out the measure on an up bow. So starting on a down bow, finishing on an up bow. One, three, one, three. Let's do that together on a down bow. Now here's something that you might choose to do. In old time fiddling, um, players will use what they call a mid bow accent. They're gonna essentially make two notes out of one bow, one direction of the bow. So um, in this case, we would make that second one, three, um, a, uh, an eighth note into two quarter notes tied and each one accented. Staccato tie, technically. Um, so you see how I'm kind of giving the bow a little bit of a push on that long note. Midway through the bow. And remember when I talked earlier about keeping um, your, your bow sort of centered using the middle third of the bow? Here's where that can really come in handy. If we were all the way up here, for instance, at the, at the beginning of the B section, we're gonna run out of bow. Um, so we wanna make sure we have enough road ahead to, to pull this, this longer phrase off. Push. So we're just gonna give the bow a little bit of a shove, really. Let's practice that together a couple times. So you can do it either way. You can just play it as written or you can play it with a mid-bow accent. Adds a nice little sort of old-timey touch to this part of the tune. Pretty subtle detail, but I think it's a good one. And that brings us to measure 10. So we're starting on a down bow with a quick little eighth note run. We're gonna go three, four, three, one, oh, two, oh. And of course, crossing from the A to the D string. Keep the bow pretty short. kind of a scaly run. We're going to start at the three, go up to the four, and then kind of basically walk down to that open D, skipping a few notes along the way. Along the way. So let's practice that together. Three, four, three, one, A, D, two, D. A couple times together. So you might be wondering, why am I using the fourth finger here instead of the open E? Well, you could use the open E. Um, and that's kind of a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a matter of, of style, let's say. Um, do you want sort of a brash sounding sort of percussive open string in the middle of that phrase? That sounds kind of good too. Or do you want the whole phrase to sound sort of um, unified in terms of the, the, the tone color of, of the instrument? So do you want, for instance, the whole line to be played on those warm sounding lower strings? 
I kind of like that sound, that smoother sound. But you know what? I'm, you know, if if you if you'd like to use the open E, I could I could get behind that too. So I would suggest though trying both approaches and really kind of listening and comparing and see what you like better. To me, that open that open E sounds like it sticks out a little bit. It's like a crooked tooth. That brings us to measure 11. Here we have this, uh, this, this uh, run of quarter notes, and these are gonna sound a little bit, how should I put it? They're gonna sound a, a little bit um, uh, choppy. That's the word I'm looking for. And you can play those a little bit shorter. Almost staccato. So it's A1, open the E, and then a quick E to E1. That brings us to measure 12. So here we have another one of these scaly runs. This is going to be um, just a walk down from E2 to A2. Simply stepping down the scale, starting with a two note slur on a down bow. Down to the open A. Up to the open, sorry, up to the A1, and then again we have this tipping over the bar line slur. So I'll play that again for you to hear it. Walking down, open A, A1, tip. So let's practice that together. Again. One more time together. Okay, let's review the B section up to the point that we just uh, left off with. So we have this longer phrase at the beginning. Remember to use the fourth fingers there, or at least to try to use the fourth finger there. So again, long. And here we could do the mid bow accent. And again, tipping over the bar line again. So let's practice that together. Okay, let's look at measure 13. We've got another one of these over the bar line slurs. From the second to the third finger on the A string. Over to the first finger on the E string. Back to the A3. Then the two on the A string. Open E. And back to that second finger. Now, if that line seems familiar, that's for a reason. This is the same fingering as we saw in measure three, except now we're gonna be doing it on the A string instead of the, um, the D and the A string. So um, I should say the, the A and the E string rather than the D and the A string. So it's two to three over the bar line, kind of tipping over the bar line. Then we're gonna leave our third finger down for the first half of the measure second finger down for the second half of the measure. So let's do that together, starting with a two note slur on a down bow. Walking down, 
One more time together. And again. And that brings us to measure 14. This line is going to start on the A string with an A1 to an open A, two note slur. And again, that's starting on a down bow. So two note slur. One, two, three on the A, back to the one, open A. And then we're going to include that over the bar line slur that you see here at the end. So I'll play the whole line. Again, sort of tipping over the bar line. So starting on the A string uh, with a down bow, two note slur. And then tip from D2 to D3 over the bar line. So let's play that together. Again, one more time, and then moving on to measure 15. Let's start with that two note slur over the bar line. And this is going to seem very familiar. This is a repeat of what we saw up in measure three. And here again, we're going to keep the third finger down through the first half of the measure and the second finger down through the second half of the measure. Let's do that together. One more time. And moving right along to the last measure, measure 16. This will also seem familiar. We saw this same phrase in measure eight, the last measure of the A part. So two note slur, D1 to D, high three, back to one, open D. And here we are ending on an up bow. So if we repeat, we can start the, the A part again on a down bow. So it's high three, up on a D. Do that together on a down bow, two note slur. Again. One more time for practice. Watch your intonation on that high three on the G string. Now let's review uh, the last four measures. So we start with that two note slur over the bar line, A2 to A3, third finger down, second finger down, another two note slur, third finger down, second finger down, high three, open D, ending on an up bow. together. Again. 